So let's look at question 15, all right? This is a P4 paper, okay? So here you have the life cycle of an Aedes mosquito, right? Okay, so this question, all right, is actually, it's very interesting, okay, because it came out for the PSLE paper last year, okay, in the year 2020 as well. So this question came out in for PSLE last year. A P4 topic, right? Life cycle of an Aedes mosquito. So they say, based on the diagram above, okay, how many stages are there in a life cycle of the Aedes mosquito? Of course, we all know life cycle of a mosquito starts from the egg to the larva to the pupa to an adult. Okay, remember that another term for larva, for mosquito only, all right? For mosquito, they are known as wrigglers. Okay, so it's actually mentioned here on this picture. Okay. So we know that there are four stages in its life cycle. All right. So this is the one. Okay. This is a question that, a very similar question that came up for the PSLE here. Okay. So dengue fever is caused by Aedes mosquitoes, right? During the rainy periods, more Singaporeans may contract dengue fever. A teacher asked Amelia to suggest a way to stop mosquitoes from breeding in a fish pond. So she suggested spraying oil on the surface. Now, Based on the diagram of the wriggler shown above, okay, explain how Amelia's suggestion would kill the wrigglers. How come by spraying oil on the surface of the water, right? Why will it get rid or why will it kill the wrigglers? Now, of course, this is a simpler question, okay, from a P4 paper because they have already given you the biggest clue. Okay, PSLE wise, when you go up to P6 or now when this is your PSLE, they don't even put that information in. You need to know it by now, okay? So remember that wrigglers, okay, or lava of the mosquito, they breathe through breathing tubes, which of course sticks out, okay, on the surface of the water, all right? So it sticks on the surface of the water here, okay, because it is allowing, these breathing tubes will allow oxygen from the air to enter, okay? So that they are able to carry out respiration, all right, for all living things, right, for them to survive, okay? So let's say if I pour oil on this or I spray oil on this water surface, what's going to happen? Oil will float, right, on the water surface, okay? It'll float. And because of this, oil is also pretty thick. So what happens is that it will block the breathing tubes, okay? So you're literally suffocating them, right? Because when you block the breathing tubes, you are preventing oxygen from the surrounding air to enter the tubes, okay, for them to take in, all right? So for a P4 answer, okay, we always describe the wrigglers, right? We always, that's why there's a writing structure. There's some writing structures for you to guide you here, okay? So this is later on in the other questions, you will see that there are certain writing structures and concepts that we will put in along the way because it's a June holiday revision, okay? So this will help you tackle the questions better, okay? So one simple example is this. So first, you got to describe wrigglers, okay? So what do they breathe through? Right after that, you explain what the oil does, and then what's the outcome. Okay, what's going to happen after that? So first, if we follow this writing structure here, we know that the wrigglers have breathing tubes to take in oxygen. Right. So what's the oil going to do? It will, okay, block the breathing tubes. So the breathing tubes will be blocked by the oil. Okay, and finally, why would they die? Right, because the wrigglers definitely cannot take in. Okay, oxygen from the surroundings, which is why they would die. Okay, and in P6 level, we all know that if they cannot take in oxygen from the surroundings, they can no longer carry out respiration to release energy, right? Which is why these mosquitoes or these wrigglers will die. Okay, and of course, it prevents them from becoming the adult stage. Okay, and we know adult stage is hard to kill because they will fly away. And that's why they'll go and spread the diseases, okay? And they're going to spread dengue fever, all right? So that's a P4 answer. P6 answer, okay, you will always say that they are no longer able to carry out respiration to release energy, okay, at the end, all right? That's why they will die, okay? Now for the next part, what is another way to stop the breeding of mosquitoes without harming the living things in the pond? So of course, if you put oil on the water surface, it can be harmful, right? Because other organisms in the pond might not be able to take in oxygen from the air as well, okay? So without harming the living things in a pond, what can I do to stop the breeding of mosquitoes? Of course, 
we need to introduce or we need to put in fishes into the pond because the fishes will feed on these um the young of the mosquito. You'll feed on the eggs, the larva, and the pupa. Okay. So sometimes it might even ask you why, which is why I so let's recall, okay? Why do you think, okay, put putting fishes into the pond will stop the breeding of mosquitoes? Why? Let's say if I change the question and ask you to give two reasons. How are you going to explain this? Okay, so let's recall a little bit. So I've already given you the information at the bottom. Okay, there are two reasons. Okay, one, when the fishes are there, right? So when the fishes move, you know that the water is not going to stay stagnant. And if you recall your concept, you know that mosquitoes, they breed on stagnant water. They lay their eggs on stagnant water. So you have fishes there, naturally they'll move about what, right? So the, the water is not going to be stagnant, it's, gonna, it's not going to be still. Okay, so this will reduce the chances for mosquitoes to breed there, to lay their eggs there. Okay, the second reason is of course the fishes would feed on the young of the mosquitoes, right? So when they feed on it, more importantly, you must say it prevents the young of the mosquito from becoming adult mosquitoes, right? Why you want to stop them from becoming adults? Number one, it's hard to kill them because they can fly away. Number two, that's their stage. The adults is the stage where they start to spread the dengue fever, right? They start to spread diseases. Okay, so these are two simple reasons, just in case they ever ask you to explain this. All right? Question eight, okay, the topic on mat next here. So this is from, again, from last year's paper, okay, 2020, all right? Now, let's read this, okay? So Gavin learned that the magnetism can pass through the toy bridge, which was made of a non-magnetic material. So always look at the picture, make sure it helps you, all right? The toy bridge here is a non-magnetic material, okay? What did he do? He placed a bar magnet under one end of the toy bridge, okay? So it's over here on the left at first, and he used the toy magnet to move the toy block to the other end of the bridge. So this is the start. Okay, you have a bar magnet here, you have a toy block here, and he moves it, and somehow this toy block is able to move along with this magnet all the way to the end of the toy bridge, okay? Why? All right, so if you look at part A, they say suggest a material which the toy bridge could be made of. Why do you think the toy block can follow this bar magnet all the way from the start to the end? Okay, you need to recall your rules of magnetism. Okay, what is the what is the three rules of magnetism? So later I'll recall that with you. Of course, you need to know by now that this toy bridge needs to be a non-magnetic material. So you can give a few examples, right? There are a few examples, okay? Just give one, okay? Just name one. You have plastic, you have wood, things like that. Okay, one will do or even... um glass okay but of course it makes more sense for it to be made of plastic or wood things that are non-magnetic material so later on if you move on they're going to ask you to explain for sure which is why again we will in this program give you your concepts we'll give you the necessary information for you to recall the the way or the points to explain this question okay so why would you think the toy block was able to move along with the magnet so yes, these are all the properties of magnets. So of course, you're not going to use all of it. So here, I'm going to ask you, which one or which property will you use to tackle part B? Okay. So first, do you think they're testing on unlike poles facing each other attract or light poles of two magnets facing each other repel? No, this is not so much on what poles are facing each other for them to attract or repel. Do you think magnets magnetism, okay, can act at a distance, all right? So in this case, possible, right? It could be, it could act at a distance, okay? Because we know that there is a certain distance here, right? For it to, for it to attract this toy block, okay? So possible, all right? Do you think they're testing on magnetism of a magnet that is strongest at its poles? <clears throat> no, not so much, okay? The one that they're testing you on is, of course, the toy bridge, which we know is a non-magnetic material, okay? And why is this so? Because we know magnet's magnetism can pass through non-magnetic materials, okay? So the bar magnet just now, right? The bar magnet's magnetism can pass through the non-magnetic material. And don't forget to add in 
your toy block. So why do you think your toy block can follow? Because of course, your toy block has to be made of a magnetic material. So more importantly, these are the two points that your teachers are looking out for. Okay, so if you don't include X at a distance, it's fine. So, but these are the two points that are, is the main focus of this question. So how do I use these two points to answer this question? Okay, you cannot just copy these two points that you see here, all right? In science, your science question, you must always mention the experiment or the objects that they give. So in this case, you must say the magnetism of the bar magnet, right? Because just now they use a bar magnet. Okay, it was able to pass through. So you can see the pointers up here. It was able to pass through the toy bridge, okay, which is made of a non-magnetic material. And the next point is that's why it's able to attract the toy block, which is made of a magnetic material, which is why the toy block can move along with the magnet and you link back nicely. All right, that's it for this question. Okay, so you can see how I use the two points here, the two properties of magnets here. Okay, and I included the objects stated in the question. Okay, and I identify whether they are non-magnetic materials or magnetic materials. Okay, now for the next part. Okay, again, we would put the properties in there. So we look at part C. Okay, he replaced the toy block with another toy block of similar mass at the same point. So he used the same bar magnet, he used the same toy bridge as well. But this time, when he tried to move the toy block to the other end of the bridge, he realized this block could not move. Okay, so very simple question. So why do you think this toy block cannot move? So yes, everything's the same. So the bar magnet, okay, the magnetism of the bar magnet can still pass through the toy bridge because it's made of a non-magnetic material. But the only reason why the toy block is not going to move is because there's no attraction, right? it probably did, cannot attract the toy block. So why do you think it cannot attract the toy block? Because yes, if you look at the last point here, okay, I know that the magnetic magnetism can attract magnetic materials, but we all know it will not attract non-magnetic materials, right? So that's the last point. That's your answer here, right? So we say the toy block, we identify the toy block here. What's the property of the toy block? Okay, the property of the toy block is that it is made of a non-magnetic material. Okay, hence the magnetism of the bar magnet, right? Again, it's not able to attract, and I use the object stated, it's not able to attract the toy block, which is made of a non-magnetic material. That's why it's not going to move along with the magnet. And that's how you get your full marks. All right, okay, so that is for part C. This is on the topic of magnets.